Epic The War of Nutbush Before Genesis, many years ago the once peaceful giant lizards were corrupted by the Black Third becoming bloodthirsty savage creatures whose sole purpose became to destroy mankind. The demon Cherubim Baal had possessed a giant flying lizard calling himself Tyran and breathed fire and brimstone. Its epic wingspan stretched 80 feet wide sending a thunderous clap in the air with every flap. His mission was to corrupt the minds of men and to destroy any who opposed the will of the Black Third on Earth. He was an absolute horror to behold and spared no mercy on man, women or child. The massive herds of bloodthirsty beasts followed his every command. Wave after wave of attacks continued on the people of Nutbush until the king declared war and the earth experienced its first epic world war. The kingdoms of mankind were united fighting for survival against the demon-possessed dragon lizard army. The war was a bone-chilling campaign of blood and death. The king called forth the Noonan armies of the north and west. A sea of men and beast alike as far as the eye could see clash in a dance of chaos and destruction. The horrific sound of oblivion filled the air. Tyran was the commanding overlord of the northern ranks the most brutal and vicious of all. The war as a whole was pretty even with both sides suffering heavy losses. It wasn't until the king received a vision from an angel about the location of the Holy Sword of Ariana. It was believed by many to be located behind the throne room. The truth was that his mother Queen Ariana too cast the sword into the black desert in the south as she went mad in her last days. He sent his scouts out to retrieve the sword though it was almost too much to bear for men of war so he sent priests to carry it back to the capital city. The black desert was a dangerous place said to be haunted by the dead spirits of the first man. The priests made their way to a black mountain of ash in the midst of the black desert. Inside the mount they found the prize they were seeking. The sword was laying in belly of a skeleton of what looked like a sea beast. Very odd considering that they were in the middle of a desert. They put the sword in an ark they built in the temple and carried it back to capital with no issues. With this mighty weapon the tide was turned almost instantly. Stories tell that the king called down fire from heaven and lightning to smite the enemies of Nutbush. The Battle of Osha was where the king unsheathed the mighty weapon for the first time blinding his enemies in holy light before tearing through the ranks. Apparently the weapon grants the holder an untold level of strength speed and endurance. Not to mention that the sword has devastating destructive power especially as it connects to evil energy. The armies of Satan are presently now in full retreat back into the shadows. The war of Nutbush lasted 30 and 5 years until the end, but as always evil would return. Such is the order of all things. During the early days of the war a child was born to the king. This would be no ordinary child. Her name was called Ariana. Princess Ariana III was different from most little girls in that she could wield a sword and kill a full-grown man and lion at age 7. Born in the heat of war her childhood was blaze of brutal training and tests no little girl let alone a princess should ever endure. But she never complained. It was if she had been born for combat. She possessed a great inner rage that fueled her in battle thus giving her great strength as well as focus. It was if the madness of her grandmother transferred to her only in battle. By 10 years old she was an officer in the royal guard. By 14, she was a captain of the King's Guard. At first glance one would never suspect her to be as deadly as she was. She took great pride in keeping her beautiful face mark free. Her body was another story, perfectly sculpted with skin the color of ebony. Her body told the story of her war-born life. Scar after scar all over her dark arms, legs, and torso, mostly from battle by means of teeth, sword or whip. Her long black hair was braided down the middle of her back. During battle she had weights and blades sewn into her hair so that when whipped around during battle it produced a razor sharp whip that could sever a man in half. On the battlefield she was a total instrument of death. The threshold of pain she possessed was unlike any the world had seen. Her fellow soldiers would joke and say that she didn't feel anything at all. She would always deny it and say she was great at not showing the appearance of pain while always being in pain. She once wanted her teeth filed down into fangs but the king forbid it. After all, she is to be queen one day. Princess Ariana possessed all the mannerisms of a young future queen balanced with the fierce and ruthless aggression associated with warlords in the field. In all her years she never celebrated a birthday because of war and this year would be no different. On her 15th birthday she was placed on the front lines. The giant lizard demon snarled and hissed at the sight of her. She was always a key target to be captured and not killed but it was easier said than done as all lizards that stood before her fell. 
It was on her birthday during the Battle of Osha where she saw it for the first time. The sight of the legendary sword that bore her name made her eyes go wide. She heard the trumpet sound as the king unsheathed it and the warm light that was so bright but not painful danced upon her face. She remembers the collected look of terror and confusion on the faces of the enemies of Nekush, as if they had seen this weapon in ages past. She watched her father turn into a dark blur and one by one demon after demon fell in a bloody smoking heat. She had never seen anything move so fast. She had heard her entire life about this holy sword that bears her name and now she is seeing it in action. With all of the things she had seen in her short 15 year life this moment was a first. She was mortal. As the great battle of Osha reaches its climax the mighty king raises his sword towards the blackened sky and with the rushing wind the sky began to glow and ominous blood red color. Suddenly pillars of fire and bolts of lightning began to rain down from the heavens smiting only the enemies of the kingdom of Nutbush. The beasts howled and cried out in pain. The carnage was incredible and the stench of charred flesh filled the air as the sky returned to its cosmic display of glory. The battle was over and the war was almost at an end. The demonic leaders must show themselves eventually. The enemy was in full retreat and the people of Nutbush mourned their lost ones and celebrated the victory for three days and three nights. The armies of Nutbush returned to the capital city. Later that night as the partying went forth, Princess Ariana remained in her chambers tending to her injuries and reflecting on what she had seen and done. The sounds of music and dancing reverberated within the palace walls. She wasn't much for dancing as a woman of war but she did appreciate good music. As she is removing the razor blades from her hair, she gazes into her mirror at herself. Her face was still radiant and flawless as a midwinter sunset. She had her father's eyes, strong and determined. Princess Ariana's beauty was inherited from her mother. Her mother was one of the royal concubines and a proud but concerned woman. She always wanted her daughter groomed for being a queen and heir to the throne instead of a woman of war. She loved her nonetheless as the king loved her. She was his only begotten child. Once she finished her hair she bathed and got into bed. Instead of celebrating an epic victory on her birthday she chose rest instead. She was great at blocking the world out so she could sleep in peace in the midst of the festivities. It didn't take long for sleep to overtake her. It was the only thing she would dare let her guard down for. As the music faded into an echo and darkness closed in, there was a warm light. It started as a small dot piercing the blackness and then it grew bigger and brighter. It began moving towards her and she could feel a warm breeze against her face. There was a low menacing hum that began to get louder as the light got closer. The light began to take shape and as it got closer her battle senses kicked in. The wind suddenly became violently strong and the low hum bow became a rushing mighty pulsation as of the flapping of many wings in unison. A normal man at this point would be terrified beyond comprehension but Ariana was born to fight. She looked for her sword but saw only blackness all around her. The only light was from the being approaching and the only sound seemed to be that of a wind from the being. She screamed her battle cry and prepared to charge into the light when suddenly it moved faster than she could react and was standing in front of her. Ariana froze at the sight of the being with her mouth agape. Behind her dark eyes that were blacker than the darkness went wide with fear and scurried away. Before her stood the Archangel Gabriel. Clothed in a white and gold robe he stood about 14 feet tall, taller than any giant she had ever seen. On his head was a spinning crown of golden light that danced it up what looked like a white flame of fire on his head. His skin flowed freely like water. His white and golden wings were insanely massive. He seemed to have wings coming out of his wings. The light of him was so bright it was almost unbearable to gaze upon him. His face could only register in her brain as perfect and his eyes were golden. Never had she imagined anything so divine, so without flaw. She fell to her knees in fear. Fear and submission was totally unfamiliar to her until this moment. She knew before her stood a being from heaven. He reached his holy hand down and touched the crown of her head and with the gentle voice of many rivers he spoke unto soul her saying, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. Ariana was confused and still stared at the ground unsure of how to react. Is this really happening or is this some sort of weird dream? And Gabriel said unto her, Fear not, Ariana, daughter of Alnum, for thou hast found favor with God, and, behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name David Emmanuel. He shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. He will usher in the dawn of a new age and become the father of every nation. His blood will be the blood of all men. Then Ariana said unto Gabriel, How shall this be, seeing that I know not a man? We are in a time of war and the time for me to be courted and married is afar off. Gabriel answered her saying, 
the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Ariana struggles with wrapping her mind around what she is hearing from Gabriel. What of my father the king? Surely he will not understand and approve of the pregnancy she says to the angel of the Lord. Hard days are coming child but you must remain strong and slow to anger. For the seed you carry will bring balance and order to this world and the world to come. As for you, you will be presented with a choice. In you dwells great wrath, greater than all of God's creations. But even your wrath was created to serve the Lord. Follow your heart and God will personally reward you. Farewell and God be with you Princess Gabriel began to glow brighter and spread his mighty wings and with one flap ascended high above her until his light was no more. As his light faded so did the piece of sleep envelope her once more. The morning's light pierced through her window and she sat up in bed at the sound of the trumpets. She could remember the dream like it was a memory of a real event. She decided not to give it much thought as she prepared for battle. Once she was ready she made her way to the throne room to report to the king. Even thought everyone knew her as his daughter and heir to his throne he regarded her as just another officer in the throne room. She was fine with that. She could do fine without being exalted for now with all the fighting left to be fought. She kneels at his feet and he commands her to rise. Ever so proud of his daughter but never showing it. King Alnum gives her the day's assignment. There was a horrific event that happened many years ago in the early years of the war called the Unholy Communion where the fallen angels of the Black Third raided a Noonan city raping all of the women. These women would later give birth to Nephilim and Cyclops and Giants. These were all manner of mystical beasts that would eventually kill off the human population of the city. Her mission was simple. Search and destroy. If it moves it dies. This victory should advance their efforts in the war, as this city is a major port of evil. She bows her head in honor of the king and turns to head out with her team. The king will not be fighting unless his presence is needed but he is confident that the one true god will deliver the enemy into Ariana's hands. Her team awaits her at the gates. On this mission she is in command and she is also the youngest of the crew. Lyle of Armenia is a 17-year-old swordsman and childhood friend to her left. A fierce young warrior who loves his people and honors his princess and king. To her right stands her caretaker, Rigel, a half-breed red-skinned giant found as a baby in the mountains of Osha and nurtured by the Noonan people. His naturally evil nature has been suppressed through years of loving and training. He has been on Earth for 50 plus years it is assumed but half-breed giants stop aging at 18 when they are fully mature. He stands 8 feet tall and carries an axe made of solid diamond that slices through just about everything. Rigel is one of the most skilled diamond smiths in all of Nutbush. In the rear were the twins Ain and his sister Rose of Orion. Orion is a Noonan city deep in the mountains of Sanchi located in the far west. Ain was handsome, tall and muscular and skilled with many weapons and fighting tactics and Rose was fair and short and wasn't much of a fighter as far as hand-to-hand -hand combat but was extremely resourceful. Because of her short height she excelled at a young age in climbing trees for leverage during battles. She created pellets packed with various affecting agents. Some were poison gas, others simulated smoke or fire bombs. She flung them from her slingshot and was deadly accurate. This commanding team of five was once ten but casualties of war happened. Each warrior knows that above all else to protect the princess at all costs. They man their horses and set off to the forest woods in the east towards the fallen city. They sing songs and tell stories of old battles and myths along the way. They were young but their team was the elite force of the Noonan army. The original ten members were all child prodigy warriors, highly decorated for their accomplishments on the battlefield. As they travel closer to the city they hear the whispers in the forest. This is an evil place, Aim says as he looks around. There's no such thing my friend. Just evil creatures in good places the princess responds with a smirk. They finally reach the city and it's a ghost town. Not a single creature in sight. Half of the buildings looked burnt up and there was a foul stench of death in the air. This city was once filled with people until that fateful horrible day where mass rape and murder filled the streets and homes of its inhabitants. The men and children were all eaten or taken as slaves and the fertile women were left in the streets pregnant with demon seeds that grew ten times faster than human babies. The mothers died during childbirth as the demon babies tore their bodies open like rag dolls from the inside out. These babies would then eat their mother's remains until a general takes them in for training. The unholy communion it was dubbed was the new wave of battle strategy that was radically efficient as well as gruesome. I don't like this one bit. Rigel scoffed. The entire scenario seemed too convenient and thus untrustworthy. 
Suddenly with the sound of a hundred lions a mighty roar filled the air as dozens of monsters come out from among the trees. It's an ambush. The warriors of Nutbush form a circle so that no one's back are exposed. Ariana smiles in amusement. These big boys look ready to die I, let's send them to the beyonders realm. The Noonans though vastly outnumbered go on the offensive and run to their enemies. The other giants go for the biggest gun, which is Rigel, but his axe is severing anything within the swing radius. Ain and Lyle flank Ariana twisting and slicing at their foes. Limbs are sent flying and screams of pain echo the air. The ground begins to rumble and out of the ground climbs a huge cyclops ogre about 10 feet tall. In his hand is a giant tree root with iron shards lodged inside of it. I've been waiting a long time to chase Lloyd with my princess. He bellows with his foul smelling breath. Today will not be that day my friend. Ariana says as she narrowly avoids his grasp and lunges towards him and drives her dagger deep into his neck slitting his throat ear to ear. She licks the blade and spits in his face as he collapses on a pool of his own dark blood. He swings his root club at her head and she flips out of its reach. Black blood is oozing from his neck. She throws her dart straight for his eye and connects. As he lets out a deafening howl of pain, she jumps high into the air and flips again coming down with both feet upon his head crushing his skull. Rose is perched in a tree picking off one after another with her slingshot using the firebomb and flesh-eating pellets. Ain and Lyle are in a two-man formation kicking and dazzling with advanced weapons that sending sizzling limbs flying everywhere. They are actually having fun amidst this chaos. Suddenly the ground shakes and cracks once more and the ground opens up again but this time it's a demon and judging by his size he must be one of the high generals. He steps onto the earth and the ground and it shakes under his feet. This creature stood about 11 feet tall and was all black from head to toe. He had the wings of a great dragon and his eyes were a dark glowing red color. He had the head of a boar. He opens his mouth and the sound of his voice is as the growl of many wolves. Today you shall die princess. Your destiny will not be fulfilled. He smiled. Over my dead corpse, Rigel bellowed as he hurled his diamond axe straight at the demon general. It hummed as it sliced through the air at blinding speeds. It bounced off of him like a rock bounces off a tree. The foul demon begins to laugh at Tom. Ah oh, you fool, I am Baal the unclean one. Your mortal weapons are but playthings to one such as I. Baal proclaimed. Rose shoots a firebomb pellet at the demon and he spins into a black blur consuming the pellet. Ain and Lyle charge on opposite sides of Baal as he is spinning. He then stops instantly and spread his black wings and with a shout a blast of fire expels from the winds of his winds. It was if the air itself was set ablaze. Everyone one is knocked to the ground. Ain and Rose are instantly unconscious. Lyle is blown into a tree. Rigel was brought down to one knee with his hands over his burning eyes. Baal stands over a barely conscious Ariana with a great burning black sword pulled out of his mouth and raised ready for the death blow. As his hands thrust downward the sword is stopped inches from Ariana's chest. A bright light appeared on the point right in front of her skin where the blade would penetrate preventing the sword. A divine barrier? What is so special about this princess that she gets a divine barrier? Baal scoffed toward the sky and raised a black fist. No matter the earth will kill her. He laughed as he drives black sword into the ground cracking the earth and jumps into the hole he created. The ground begins to quake and liquid earth begins to spew out of the ground consuming everything it touches. The warriors of Nutbush fall unconscious as their enemies descend upon them. Some would never wait. Back at the capital the king waits impatiently for a report on the operation. The throne room door swings open with a deafening clang. What the king sees brings him to his feet and he runs to the door to find Rigel battered. Bruised and blotted carrying the bodies of Ariana and Rose. They are alive, but I couldn't save the others. It was an ambush. Rigel cried as he fell to his knees laying the bodies down. The servants stormed out of their chambers to assist and took the princess and Rose straightway to the infirmary. The king, half furious and half thankful that his daughter was alive asked Rigel to tell him exactly what happened. So Rigel told him the entire story as it happened. He also noted that he wasn't sure how long he had been unconscious after the final attack from Baal. He just knows what when he woke up he saw that Lyle and Ain were being eaten and there was a swarm gathering around Rose and Ariana. He charged the crowd and grabbed them both one in each hand and ran as fast as he could towards the horses. Their cloths had been turned off and their bodies were bloody. They were alive, but Rigel still felt like a failure. The king thanked Rigel and dismissed him to go and get treated. The king waited by his daughter's bedside for three days until she regained consciousness. She smiled and cried when she saw his face. She tried to leap out of bed to check on the others but her body would not cooperate and she fell. The king picked her off of the floor and put her back in her bed. Rest now Ariana, the answers are coming. 
the king said and with those words she lost consciousness again. Princess Ariana had been out for a week following the ambush. When she finally came to she saw Rigel kneeling by her bedside. His face was a kaleidoscope of emotions ranging from joy to extreme sorrow. Her voice was raspy and her throat was dry. Report. She struggled to say. Rigel stood straight up at attention. There was an ambush. The demon general Val attacked us and there were losses. Ain and Lyle are dead and Rose is still recovering from her wounds. Rigel stated in his military tone. Ariana thought about all of the battles and missions and happy times with Lyle and Ain and two tears escaped her eyes. One for each of her fallen fellow warriors. You will be avenged. All of you. I swear this. She pledged to herself fighting back more tears. She struggled to sit up but was in great pain. The head caretaker storms into the room commanding everyone to leave that instant. There is a look of great confusion and panic on her face. What is the matter caretaker? Ariana says. Your blood tests. Your blood. She muttered nervously. What is IT? Ariana commanded. The strength of her voice was returning the caretaker bows her head. Your blood tests revealed that you are with child my princess. She whispered. Princess Ariana's eyes went wide and her jaw dropped. The memories of a distant dream pierced through her mind as light pierces into darkness. The angel, the message, the mission. It all came flooding back to her like a gust of wind. So much ran through her mind but first the king had to be notified of what is going on. She dressed in her royal attire and made her way to the throne room where the king was. Rigel and Rose escorted her flanking her. The royal guards bowed at the side of her approach and opened the massive golden doors. She walks down the corridor towards her father and Rose petals are cast before her feet as a sign of respect. The king smiles when he sees his daughter. He stands to embrace her. I'm so glad to see that you have recovered quickly my child. He says boastful and proud. My lord there are urgent matters which need to be brought to your attention. She said as her face took on a more concerned look for a woman of her young age. The king strokes his black beard and looks puzzled. Speak freely child. He says. I. Father, I am with child. She said and her voice was cold as ice. I have known no man. Then how is this possible? The king shouted in rage. Ariana didn't flinch but stood firm. An angel of light came unto me in a dream and told me that this would be so. She said. Lies. He shouted. If you know not a man then you must be carrying a demon seed and there shall be no demon seed of royal blood in my kingdom walls. He bellowed. Father are you mad? What are you saying? She cried. I am saying you are banished from the kingdom walls of the noon and capital city until your dying day and so be it to your seed. God has forgotten you my daughter and it breaks my heart. Just like my mad mother. No whore of the devil will hold rank in my kingdom. Even if it is my own flesh and blood. He proclaimed. At this point her heart was officially broken. Even though she was a warrior a thoroughbred killing machine since birth she was still a little girl under that war torn body. She fell to her knees and wept as the royal guards came to escort her to the city gates. Rigel roared and the guards drew their swords. Ever since she was born my purpose in life was to serve and protect her. If she leaves so too will I. Rigel proclaims to the king. And I too O oh king. Rose says defiantly so be it. And may God have mercy on us all. The king said as Princess Ariana is led to the city gates. The massive gates shut behind them with a low thud and they are no residents of the Badlands. This is the land of demons and giant lizard. This is the land of unstable earth and burning rain. It is the place without the eyes of God many say. The king prays and cries for seven straight days and nights following. Into the woods they travel uncertain of what will happen in any moment but trusting in God's plans. Princess Ariana is broken, but not destroyed. Not yet.